I have a question that is pertinent today. How is this day different from all others? Well, obviously, it is the first time a lying, stinking, rotten, white, grifting president of the United States is being arraigned. Now, let me make something very clear here. Um, first of all, uh, I am, I'm going to record the show today in two parts. This first part is just before, well, a couple hours before the orange vomit appears at the courthouse in Miami. The second part of today's program, uh, usually, well, you know, after the commercial break, that will be after the son of a bitch has been arraigned and I have a chance to watch, as I hope you will, on MSNBC or wherever you, you watch this sort of thing. And then I will do the second half of the program after the bum bastard has been arraigned, okay? So just so you know, that's how I'm going to do it today. Now, the, the wild card in all this, of course, is this, um, this terrible, terrible judge who, who's not going to be hearing the arraignment today. Uh, she's not presiding. She'll be res- presiding over the trial unless she does the honorable thing and gets her ass out of the way. She's made it very clear in, in a ruling she made several months back when she ordered a special master to be appointed to check up on the evidence gathered by the Department of Justice against this son of a bitch, Donald Trump. I am so over this. This weaselly bastard, not her, Trump, who has used every single delaying tactic or not paying people or hiding from people. The son of a bitch has lasted 76 years doing that. Enough! (laughs) Uh... Maybe if I do some davening here and, and pray, God, enough already! <laughs> okay, okay. But the wild card is, uh, is Eileen Cannon, a Trump appointee who was severely reprimanded by a, a, a conser- highly conservative appeals court who overturned her order and more or less told her, get the fuck out of the way, lady. You, you are doing things that your judicial robes do not allow you to do. Be gone. Now, I'm over-exaggerating, of course, but essentially that's what the appeals court said to her. So... The federal indictment on the bum, which was unsealed on Friday, last Friday, was chock-a-block with startling new accounts of how this bastard mishandled classified information. But like I mentioned, the the revelation of who would oversee the trial presents possibly, I don't think possibly, I think seriously, a unique challenge for the Justice Department, and that's because of this Eileen Cannon. Now, she is a former prosecutor who has spent two and a half years on the bench. This case screams for someone who is experienced. This is not Eileen Cannon. Eileen Cannon is is, is a newbie, she's a novice, and she's shown categorically that she will honor and respect and get down on her knees in front of Donald Trump and give him what he wants. That is crystal clear. I shall now oversee a trial. The, 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 the consequences of which, the implications of which will influence the, the, the public trust in this country in the fairness of the court system forever, certainly years to come. Do you realize that this Eileen Cannon could dismiss the case? Trump's lawyers, one of the things they will do, whoever the hell they are, he doesn't have, I guess he has a new lawyer now, But one of the things that Trump's lawyers, one of the first things they will do once the trial begins, and that could be months, if not a year from now, 
would ask for an order from the court, a directed order to dismiss. And, and his, his, his lawyers would say, uh, Your Honor, there's, there's no evidence here that warrants the trial. And this judge, Eileen Cannon, can end the whole thing. And that would be the end of it because of double jeopardy uh, preventions in our Constitution. So everything is hanging on a person who's been on the federal bench for two and a half years, who is a Trump supporter, who has already ruled in a manner that indicates that support, and who has been told by an appellate court to shut the fuck up and stand down. We're concerned that ruling. Now, of course, there's a chance that uh, Jack Smith will, uh, and he has, the, he has the power to do this. I don't think he will. He has the power to request a different judge oversee the case. But Jack Smith, like so many people who believe in the Constitution of the United States, believes in the Constitution of the United States, and he feels that justice will prevail. Oh, Mr. Smith, please take a look at Trump's history. Take a look at the person you're prosecuting. Justice prevails with this bastard? Look at the tempo in the country. Look at the judges who this son of a bitch appointed and was confirmed by a Christian fascist Senate. Oy. Well, another thing Cannon will do, she can assist the Trump team in delay, 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 because the Trump team is going to file motion after motion after motion, which will be ruled upon. And if the judge doesn't rule the way Trump's team wants, then they will appeal her a motion. This could go on literally for a couple of years. What happens a couple of years from now? Trump will be president. What has the office of, uh, uh, what's it called? Office of Judicial Review, whatever. The office in the executive branch that determines whether or not a sitting president can be charged with these kinds of crimes. And the ruling, going all the way back to the Bush era, when the war criminal Bush, George Bush, was president, the ruling is, no, a sitting president can't be put on trial, can't be indicted. So you see what's going on here, don't you? Yes, of course you do. Because even if, like me, you wear glasses, you are not blind. You see what the son of a bitch has in mind. Delay, delay, delay. And get elected again? And then what? Well, I think it's rather clear, then what? So, this phony ass Judge Cannon will guide how quickly the case goes to trial. And by the way, she will also oversee the selection of jurors. And this is the part that is really scary. She will determine what evidence can be presented to the jury when the trial begins. Unfucking believable. There's a professor of legal ethics at NYU, Stephen Gillers, I think is the way you pronounce his last name, Stephen Gillers. And he is predicting that the trial would be fair. I, I, I think he's probably of the same mindset as Jack Smith. I'm sure Stephen Gillers, being a professor, a professor of legal ethics at the universe, uh, NYU School of Law, he probably has a lot of faith in and confidence in the Constitution, in ethical behavior. And I would say to Stephen Gillers, God damn it, do you not see what's going on here, professor? You're a thousand times more brilliant than I am. But dear God, you don't need to be a weatherman to see whether or not it's raining outside. Don't you see, professor? Don't you see, Prosecutor Smith, what's going on here? Well, I know you do. You're, you're just like the rest of us. You're not, you're not blind. You may wear glasses. You may uh, have vision issues, but you're not blind. You see what's going on. So how can you say that the trial would be fair? Unless you're declaring that you have absolute confidence, faith, and respect 
for Judge Eileen Cannon. And that should have been blown to smithereens when she made the ruling several months ago ordering a special master to check and double check all of the evidence gathered by the Justice Department against this son of a bitch. Now, Stephen Gillers, a professor at NYU, said the Orange Bastards claims that he is being selectively prosecuted and politically persecuted will undermine public trust in the supposed nonpartisanship of the courts and the Justice Department and the FBI. This is what the son of a bitch Trump has been working on for six years this is what the fascist media in this country have been putting out there for six years over and over, beating the same goddamn drum over and over. The courts, the Justice Department, the FBI, they even came up with a word, weaponization of the government of the United States against one person only, Donald fuckhead Trump. And there are people out there who believe that. Of all the people in this country, the Justice Department, the FBI, the courts, media, God, well, not God, everybody has focused on persecuting Donald Trump. Now, a normal pe person would look at that charge, claim, belief, proposition and 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 laugh their ass off they would say what the fuck are you talking about he is a grifter he's a liar he's a thug a bum a mafia wannabe he's a bastard but beyond all that how <laughs> how possibly could every single institution having to do with media or law or, or, or politics or public opinion in this country, how could it have focused itself on one person? And then the next question would be, and if it could, why? But the dumb bastards who support Trump would no more question their own stupidity than they would open a vein in their own bodies. I, I've never seen anything like this. I, I, I've always had faith to a degree, sometimes greater, sometimes lesser, in the inherent rationality of the people of this country. Oh, I've known all my life, at least as, as an adult, that so many people in this country were just fucking crazy. I'm, no, I mean literally, clinically insane. Should be in an institution or, or heavily medicated or something. But beyond that group, which I guess constitutes about 10, 15% of the population, beyond them, I've always been aware, as you have, I'm sure, that probably 35 to 40% of the people in this country who vote have not a fucking clue as to what they're voting for or against. They go with the emotion put out there by the loudest mouth in the political system. And the loudest mouth, especially in the lead up to an election, is usually the grifter, the liar, the son of a bitch, the one who would destroy the democratic system. That's why they have to scream. <laughs> Uh, Professor Giller said this, quote, this will be the most consequential and most watched prosecution in American history. Will enough of the public accept the verdict, whatever it is, or will they see any result as political? Answers to those questions are as important as the verdict. So saith Professor Stephen Gillers, Legal Ethics Department, NYU School of Law. Now I understand why I turned to the Haggadah today. Right? 
There are so many questions, important questions, right? That almost border on consequential actions similar to what the ancient Jews developed as, as, as their, their, their Seder dinner. The, remember what the Seder was for. <laughs> it was the last dinner before Passover, which according, uh, you know this, but according to Jewish mythology, the Passover was when the angel of this vicious, violent, murderous, bloodthirsty God would pass over Egypt and slay the firstborn in every household unless lamb's blood was painted over the archway of the dwelling. Huh? We know that. You learned that. You know, Christian Jew, it doesn't matter. You learned this, didn't you? You Muslim, you learned this when you went to Sunday school or whatever you call it in your religion. And what I fear now, with no disrespect to Judaism, but what I fear now is a Passover, you might say, that could be ending, violent, destructive, vicious, bloody, if Trump is found guilty. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, can, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.